Hey everybody, Josh Beatler here with the Guitar Player School. I thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in more content on guitar improvisation, guitar technique, music theory, guitar solo analysis, and more. I release a new video every couple weeks or so since the newborn baby. Um, I'm really looking forward to you in this video. In this video, we're going to talk about a super simple and free tool that I found that will help you learn how to analyze a chord progression so you know what key you're playing in, so you know what chords you can play, so you know what scales you can play. We're going to start off with that in major keys, and then in future videos, we'll do minor keys and we'll do modes. Um, in the meantime, if you're interested, you can head over to my website, theguitarplayerschool.com, where you can get a free lesson on how to solo in any key over major and minor chords, plus 12 free backing tracks. All you got to do is enter your name and email, and you'll get instant access to those. All right, so let's dive right into the video. So if you're somebody that wants to understand some music theory because you want to learn how to play music in multiple styles, or maybe you want to play better guitar solos, or maybe you want to write songs, or maybe you just want to be able to jam with people, and when they say, hey, it's in the key of E, you want to know what the heck they're talking about. Well, it doesn't just hand itself to you. You do have to do some studying, but it's really helpful to have some tools to go along with it. So I found a really awesome free tool that is a interactive circle of fifths tool on the website and I'm going to link to the description in below. Sorry, the laptop's on my lap so I see it shaking quite a bit. Um, it is link in below and what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple famous songs and chord progressions and we are going to analyze them together. Okay, so let's go to the tool first. All right, so again, link is in the description. So what you see here is the circle of fifths. Now, whoever created this, uh, Rand Scullard, this is a really cool tool and it's free. There's tons of resources out there online uh, that are overpriced, but I mean, you're paying for, you know, pizzazz and cool looking stuff. But, you know, if you could draw this on pen and paper, it's just as effective. So what you see here is the circle of fifths. This is all the major keys going around in order. Every time you go one to the right, you're going up five letters. C, D, E, F, G. That's five letters. One, two, three, four, five. C, D, E, F, G. And if you were to go up another five, then D. And another five, A. And another five, E. And then conversely, if you go the other way, it's four. C, D, E, F. F, G, A, and then B flat. So as you go this way, going up a fourth or down a fifth, depending on how you want to think about it. So why is this such an effective tool? Well, because you can use this to figure out the four, the five, the one, the six, the three. Basically, when you look at a chord progression, and I'm going to show you a super easy way to look at a chord progression and plug it into this, and it will pump out 99% of the time the correct key. There are instances where a song will borrow chords from other keys, and that is totally a lesson for another video. Today we're just going to be talking about chord progressions that strictly stay in one key from a couple famous songs. So let's dig right into it. Okay, so the tip here for how to figure out what major key you're in. You're looking for two major chords that are one whole step apart. And on the circle of fifths, we'll call this one cycle apart. So what that means is, let's say the chord progression had an A and a B in it. So what we're doing is we're skipping a letter and moving to the next. We'll call that a cycle, okay? Or we can call it two cycles, whichever you'd like. So what you're looking for are two major chords in the chord progression that are near each other, but you have to skip over. And what that does is it lets you know that the one in the middle, in this case E, will end up being the one chord of the key. So if I go to the key of E over here, you're going to notice that the E the A and the B, those are the four and five chord, and then the E becomes the one chord. So now we're in the key of E. And then the cool thing is then, then it also tells you the rest of the chords in the key. So a uh, couple things to know. If it's an uppercase Roman numeral, that's indicating a major chord. If it's a lowercase Roman numeral, that's indicating a minor chord. And if it's this lowercase with a little circle, that's a diminished chord. You typically won't play that for most people, um, but just so you know what it means. Okay, so let's go back to our songs. Songs we're looking at today are Hey Jude, Sweet Home Alabama, and Hallelujah. So let's look at Hey Jude. The chords are C, G, A minor, F, C, G, F, and C. So let's list out the major chords. We have a C, we have a G, and we have an F. And then the minor chords, we have A minor. 
So let's just focus on the major chords, C, G, and F. So we look over here and we go, okay, C, G, F. All right, so G and F, we have to skip over each other. So that lets us know that's our four and five. So then we'll click on C over here. And if we did it right, this one should land on C. And that's 100% correct. It's letting us know that for this part, for this song, we're in the key of C. And then it also lets us know that the A minor is the six chord in that key. And that's called the relative minor. Whenever you have a one and then a minor six, this is the relative minor. Different topic for a different video, but that's it's literally that simple. Okay, let's go to the next one. Sweet Home Alabama. We have D, C, and G. So those are the, the whole chords, all the chords in the song. So we're going to go back to our chart here. And we'll see, okay, D and C. We have to skip over. So it looks like it's going to be the key of G. So let's click on G. And sure enough, the one goes right on the G chord. So that lets us know, okay, we're in the key of G. All right, let's go to the last one. This one's got a little bit of a curveball thrown in there. So, hallelujah, we have C, A minor, F, G, E major, and A minor. So let's list out all the major chords here. Major chords, we have C, F, G, and E. And then minor, we have A minor. Okay, so let's go back to our list here. Well, let's see, we know F and G again, are, we have to skip over. This E chord though, it seems like kind of a curveball, right? So we'll just forget about that for a second now. So let's go to F and G. And C is in the middle. Okay, so it looks again like we're gonna be in the key of C. And then we have our A minor chord, which is the, once again, the minor six chord. Now it says here that E should be a minor chord, but it's a major chord. What that means is sometimes in a song, you'll have a chord that when you look at the chords in the key should be a minor, but it's a major chord. When you have something like that, and in this case, the real chord is E7, which is an E major chord with an additional note added to it for simplicity's sake. So if I were to make this an E major chord, I would now have an additional major chord. What you'll typically see when you see a, a minor chord that's turned into a major chord that isn't originally there, you'll typically see that the next following chord is the minor chord right next to it, going to the left, going counterclockwise around the circle of the fifths. And what, what that is, it's called a secondary dominant. What it's doing is you're taking a minor chord, turning it into a major chord so that it pulls really hard to the next if you look at the song, that's exactly what happens. This E chord becomes major and then pulls much harder to the A minor. If we were to make it an E minor chord, it would still sound nice, but it wouldn't pull nearly as hard to the A minor chord. All right. So that right there is how you can use this tool to figure out the uh, key of a song. And what I'd like you to do is in the comments below, leave, uh, if you have any questions about any particular songs, and uh, you can go on Ultimate Guitar and list the chords in the comments and see if we can't figure it out together using this tool. It takes a little bit of practice. It's not something that, you know, you might watch this video a couple times, but just, I promise you, by going through this multiple times, you're going to start to see over time that there's patterns. and music has so many patterns in it that start to become apparent the more often you look at your songs okay so that's it this is josh beatler with the guitar player school again if you're interested in getting my free guide on how to solo in all 12 keys plus 12 feet backing tracks go to the guitarplayerschool.com enter your name and email into the home email address and you'll be sent instant access to that and i will see you in the next video rock on